Ah. You're like Mike Todd. All you want is attention. Please leave. I'm going to do my best to do this video with this cat bothering me, but the fact that Mike Todd says what I'm going to show you that he said out loud is amazing, it's interesting, it's telling, it lets us know that they don't really care what you think as long as you just go along with their program. Golly. Um, I'm grateful to be in a house that does not um, put praise and worship in the box. Now, you need to understand that when he's what he's talking about, he is, remember, this church has just released their their album, fine. I haven't heard of the album. Don't know anything about it. Can't critique the album. But Mike Todd is a promotional artist. This is what he's about. He's about promoting himself, his church, his brand, things like that. And so now he's speaking about having a church where they have a really good worship team. I don't know. Maybe they do. I guess they do. Um, I've, I've, I've been a part of a few churches like that. And the truth of the matter is, um, I heard it said like this. Many people pick the church that they go to because of the word. Well, isn't that what they're supposed to go to? The word now. I, I saw this on, someone sent it to me on TikTok, and so uh, this is the only version of it that I have. But the fact that you seem to have a problem with people picking a church because of the word. Remember, the Bible says it's the word that keeps us. The Bible says, your word have I hidden in my heart. So why? So that I'm not sin against you. Uh, we have only been given the Holy Spirit and the word. That's what we live off of. And we are not to depart from what is written. Written where? In the word. Like, let's be honest. Like, sometimes you can go somewhere and the praise and worship is okay. But you're like, if that, if that word is coming in, if it's about Jesus and if it's that, most people pick the church that they're going to visit because of the word. God picks the churches he's going to visit because of the worship. And the person who made the video has a little red flags up. Yeah. And the people are like, wow, yeah, come on, they're clapping. Well, first of all, where do we see that? Where in the scriptures it said that God will show up where the worship is good, but not the word? Let me just play that again. God picks the churches he's going to visit because of the worship. Think about it. What is this if he don't show up? God visits or picks the church that he's going to visit because of the worship. How absolutely and utterly stupid of him to say so. First of all, maybe he doesn't understand what true worship is. Well, let's go ask Jesus. Jesus says this in John 4, 23. He says, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth for such people are such people, the Father seeks to be His worship. You cannot worship Him in sp in spirit uh, and a lie. How you must worship Him must be in a trustworthy, truthful, honest, godly, biblical fashion. Any other way is not worship. It's just a gathering filled with emotion. The fact that a pastor would say something like that just tells you really where he is, and the fact that he has people that will keep coming to the church like that. With the pastor who says something like that tells you a lot about them. The Bible is clear. Paul tells that all scripture, all scripture is inspired and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Why? So that, so that in this word henna, in order that the man of God or woman may be adequate, equipped for every good work. It's the word of God, Mike Todd and anyone that listens to him. It's the word of God that matters. I would much rather that you had a horrible choir, that they're still getting the things together. The drummer can't drum, the piano can't, the piano's out of tune, and the singers, uh, they can't find their note. I would much rather you have that with an excellent word than the reverse. Then you've got this awesome choir, everyone's excited, everyone's happy, and the word is, yeah, whatever. As a matter of fact, all you do is you want to entertain. But then again, this is Mike Todd. And now, Take, don't take it from me. This is what he says. Mike Todd does not like to study the word. I don't like studying to preach every Sunday. It is tedious work for me. I hate it. And so when you get a person that like to study the word, you get these sort of goofy, unbiblical attempts at theology, such as Mike trying to describe the Trinity. You've just been taught wrong. It's one God. Everybody say one God. One God. Say it like you mean it. One God. One God. Three expressions. Okay, let me, let me, okay. What is this? It's water. That, 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 that's, that's what we say, but if you want to be very scientific, this is H2O. Okay? 
This is H2O. I'm thirsty. I got a straw. That's good. Let me ask you a different question. What, hold on real quick. We established this is what? It's H2O. What is this? You say ice? If we go down to its basic form, this is H2O. Now, it's in a different form than the liquid version, but this still is. Uh huh. This is a different expression. So when your drink is too warm, you don't put more water in it. It's H2O, but you put a different expression of H2O into your drink. And we call it ice. What is this? This is H2O too. It's dry ice. And it's a different expression. So if that was God the Father, God the Son, this is God the Holy Spirit. Still H2O. But it takes on a completely different form. Oh. No, we don't have it as one God, three expressions, as though he manifests himself this way, that way, that way. One moment he's water, the next moment he's ice, the next moment he's this uh, this gas. I don't know what that is, dry ice, which I don't even think that's even water, but still. It's not that he shows up one moment this way, that way, that way, different moments. He's always what he is, but he does not understand the Trinity. And the reason why? Because, as he said, he doesn't like to study. I don't like studying to preach every Sunday. What is the command for a pastor, though? To be diligent. Some verse might say, study to show yourself approved. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, which is what he should be of how he handles the text, who can accurately handle the word of truth. You know, the word, the word that you said is not as important as the worship. And he understands the worship to be the music. I get it that sometimes we call this the worship service. I don't have a problem with that, but don't let that turn you away from what true worship is. True worship can be either with music or without music. True worship is honestly, sincerely following God and being used by God. It is your expression because you have God in you. It is your expression to him and to the world. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a drum, piano, guitar, what have you. Now, Mike Todd, uh, the reason why he says this, Mike Todd's background is in music. And listen, and I'll give credit where credit is due. Mike Todd is a pretty good drummer. Many people don't know this, but I played drums since I was two. Mike Todd, however, doesn't like when you criticize him or critique him on the things that he does that are absolutely ungodly, unbiblical, that are just childish, stupid, ignorant, boyish, whatever you want to come up with. They are just ungodly. There's not they're not befitting of a pastor. And he has a problem with that. Because judgment is that you see on the outside is usually full, fueled by that scratched on the inside. That's why people can't celebrate what God's doing at Transformation Church. I'm going to say it no matter what. Y'all, I'm sorry. We need to do an uncut of this. He's been wanting to get this off his chest, and so he's going to get this off his chest because he's just tired of people saying something about him. Well, listen, if you are tired of hearing people say things about you, that means that you have been hearing people say things about you. And if you've been hearing people say things about you, then you've got one or two choices either to double down, which is what he does, which he's going to do, or to listen. So, you know what? Wisdom tells me that, that the body of believers have an issue. And so maybe I ought to change things, but he's not stupid because if I change things, the people that are coming, the money that's coming in, the attention, the brand and so forth, that's going to go away. Why? Because I don't like to study and I'm going to have to start studying. And he tells us why he doesn't like to study. Yeah, he hates it. And so why why do something that you don't like that's going to probably decrease his audience when you can do something that you do like that's going to bring an audience? Forget the fact that they're not going to heaven. The people in the comments aren't, aren't unsaved people. This is what believers look like. Well, the Bible tells us to judge. You are coming with a critical spirit. You, it says to go to your brother. Couple things. Number one, he calls it a critical spirit. Well, you call it critical. We call it biblical. Those that are that are pointing out the truth, because name one thing, name one thing, Mike Todd or any of his followers, 
Name one thing that someone has criticized him about that they were wrong about and he was right about. Just name one thing. By the way, the Bible tells us that for what what have I to do? This is Paul saying the same for us to do with judging outsiders. Do you not judge those who are within the church, but those who are outside? God judges. Remove the wicked man from among you. And so if there's something wicked, something evil going on, Paul says, get rid of that. Remove that. Well, how do you do that if you if you don't critique, judge or notice that and then point it out? You can't remove something that you have not judged to be something worthy of removal, something that is sinful. Mike Todd feels so well. You should at least DM me first. Well, you still won't do anything because, again, you know the issues, you know the point, and you, all you do is double down on. So all we can do now is rather than DMing you is to warn people about you. Go! Oh, y'all forgot that part of the scripture? You won't even hit me in the DM. You're going to put it, you, you put a five paragraph. But you somehow think that you're representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There are people who are walking away from the faith because they see. People were mad when I, when, when somebody that literally changed thousands of people's lives in, in church culture, Carl and Laura Lynch, when they needed a place to actually heal church people. There were some people that were concerned about what he was going to do with Carl Lentz, uh, that he's back and so forth. Not that he was attending a church, but the impression that you gave that he was going to be doing something influential in the church and for his ministry and people were concerned. I stated that I welcome him back as long as he's repentant and it depends upon what capacity and so forth. Uh, but however that shakes out, I'll let God work that out if he is repentant, if he wants to, if he can be restored. And so because of that, I didn't really judge. I didn't have a whole lot to say other than let's just see. But he doesn't like the fact that someone is critiquing someone who is, at least in the past, has been uh, on par with you. Not a good doctrine, but also promoting themselves. And who knows? Again, maybe it's birds with a feather flock together, not necessarily with the with the uh, the affairs and so forth, but the other ways of promoting themselves, you know, being a celebrity pastor and all. <laughs> We're telling me I should throw them out of the church and they have no place. Where the hell do you go if you need to be transformed? It's not so much where do you go to be transformed and he wants to use the words. That's fine. But where do you go if if you want people to be transformed? Well, not to Transformation Church. That is the worst place to go to, the wrong place to go to, to be transformed because Guess what you won't be? You will not be transformed. How do we know? Because you entertain sin. You promote sin. You think it's okay as long as you're there having a good time. And we know you don't care about transforming people because it's the word that transforms. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So sharp it could possibly, if possible, or it does, cut between the soul and the spirit. There is nothing like it. And you don't want to give them that. You want to give them entertainment. You want to do backflips and you want to get your hair cut and you want to spit on people and you want to say Jesus never reached his full potential. You want to say all these little things like that and do all these different things, but you don't want to stick to the word. That's why people call you out. That's why uh, you're angry. That's why you call them judgmental because you have no re retort. You have no good godly response because you are about entertainment. And so my suggestion is, this is just my suggestion. Go back to playing drums. Yeah.